December 7, 2016 White guys expect too much Dear Christian, I hide a lot of what I see and know often. What's strange is that I only do this when I feel vulnerable. Otherwise, I'm so open. I say everything, and then I run it through my mind later a thousand times and then one thousand more times. I dissect each vowel in enunciation and tone. I compare each sentence to every sentence I've heard before. Does it make sense? Does it match? I can't allow myself to do this when I feel vulnerable. Vulnerability for me usually comes from intimacy and affection, any kind of affection. It immediately feels like pressure, a pressure to perform, to reciprocate. But what if I don't know how or I give too much? I try not to make the same mistakes twice. Sometimes. It's unavoidable depending on where you're at in seeing that mistake. Allowing myself to be too vulnerable and giving too much was a theme for me at one point. <laughs> I thought that intimacy was sex and gifts, and realizing how much more came with it absolutely terrified me. I found that I could hide myself. One of the greatest skills I ever taught myself was camouflage. My award-winning poker face is my smile, my false obliviousness. I fake being unaware and unknowledgeable intentionally. Being a beginner at anything or learning something new is painful. Being caught not knowing is also genuinely painful and somewhat embarrassing. Even though not everyone knows all there is to know about everything. Being able to say, I don't know in response to a question and not feeling instant insecurity and panic is an accomplishment. Being able to respond to any level of intimacy without anger or fear is also a huge accomplishment. Any kind of relationship with anyone scares me. I have an almost constant anxiety. With family, with friends, with quote unquote lovers, I don't understand people. I do understand enough to be able to interact with them, to enjoy being in other people's company. But always in the aftermath of that interaction, I find myself excessively absorbed in second guesses. Do I really mean that? Is that sincerely what I believe? I always find myself and everyday experiences on the outside of everyday. And not to emphasize that in a manner of boast, but I tell my everyday encounters and find the reactions to them to be immense surprise. So I scale my storytelling back when I'm scared so as not to overwhelm anyone. In expressing any level of opinion, I experience intense nausea and dizziness, so when I delay in responding to a thought, it doesn't always signify ignorance. But, my finding, but me finding the balls to dis divulge what I know or how I feel about the particular, that particular thought. Within a group setting, I usually don't feel as intimidated to express my sentiment. My anxiety in the situation in these situations don't come on in that particular setting until after the fact. One-on-one, -on -one, the feeling is almost instantaneous, social anxiety. I know you are aware of my level of intelligence. You sense and acknowledge it regularly, but I feel you underestimate it because of my delay. You told me that you're here to tell people what they want, since they don't often know what they want. You can't, <clears throat> you won't tell me what you think I want. I could consider this in so many ways. I could be offended, rebellious, understanding. I took it in that order. How can you know what I want when you hardly know me? I often know far too much about other people and their lives simply by their initial presence and demeanor. You can't tell me what I want. I invited you and who you are along with your opinion into my space for you to present. And I can tell you to go at any given time, but I don't and I haven't. You are who you are and are expressing that in all that you're offering and what you say and do. It has no precedence on my actions, beliefs, or who I am as a person. I need to, very quickly, acquire the balls to completely be myself around you, always. Not just when I feel comfortable, but no matter what. I'd like to first start off by apologizing for not doing these letters individually as they were agreed upon. December 8th, 2016. Dear Christian, or do I call you Chick? I haven't even asked yet. I really thought that I was on my way to you tonight to tell you what's what. Here's my art idea that I want to include you in, and then we part ways. If you don't care to participate, then we part ways now. 
I get the importance in doing them individually and right after the interaction, but my pride tends to lead me to believe that I can rehash everything off the top of my head. Hopefully I'm as right as I usually believe I am. Okay. I didn't intentionally lie and then choose not to do the letters, believe it or not. There are numerous other factors in my life that can interfere with a task like that, and my life in particular is riddled with them. That's ironically one of the things I need to accept that I have no control over and anticipate in its inevitability in my calculations. These romantic whatever situations confuse me. It excites me and fills me with an unbearable amount of anxiety. My skin vibrates with all my unanswered questions, leaving all my swirling feelings up to chance. What is this? Where is it going? Why do you want me here? Do you do this often? Why were you on Tinder? Why did you kiss me on the first night we met? Why did you drive me out to see the cityscape? Why do I find this all so enticing? Why do I get so obsessed? The first interaction would of course be the night you came over to my area to tell me about your new idea for us. I hate not knowing, and I hate finding out. I hate being trapped inside a paradox. Because if I did find out and you answered all my infinite questions right away, then what? I don't know why I think knowing will make my anxiety quiet down, because the reality is that even if I knew whatever unknown was left, whatever unknown was left would just keep me questioning still. You commented that I ask a lot of questions, because I want to know who you are and what it is exactly that you want from me, but I can't bring myself to ask because I feel I won't like the answer. You told me that you can't decide what path to take, so you do... You go wherever someone else dream, someone else's dreams take you. You're just along for the ride, and you're not shocked by anything, and I'm an interesting person to you. Interesting is a horrible word. Just based on that, I feel like your interest in others' dreams doesn't last long before you move on to the next one, because they aren't yours and you have no claim in them, leaving you free to one wander. I've been romantically involved with wanderers. The pain of them still stings during certain seasons, like this one. My cynicism toward you isn't personal. I've just learned not to expect to stay too long anywhere. Everything is temporary. Everything at one point or another has the very likely possibility of being uprooted abruptly. I've learned to expect pain like this, but I still find myself terrified of it. I don't have to rehash the events in a play-by-play -play because you were there. But I will express to you every observation that I feel was significant to us. First off, I don't like bars. So the fact that I was willing to go to this one means it's an especially comfortable place for me. A section of my friends work and drink there, so my inviting you there was somewhat of a test. I'm sure you remember the conversations we had in which I was trying to make my intentions clear in case you wanted to do something better than what I was offering. In stating my intentions, I was... That's really neither here nor there since we're not actually in a committed relationship, so you don't have to worry about me really using these judgments on you. I always leave some sort of uh, possibility for a serious relationship because I'm honest and I know that it would be stupid to completely disregard the possibility without looking at the clues. Even though I was under the impression that we weren't right for each other, I couldn't help but visualize everything you do being done by someone I consider a girlfriend. Your interaction at the bar was a bit disappointing though because I was... It was odd to me that even after I tried to coax you into conversations, you would easily pull yourself back out and occasionally just glance at me. That's what resulted in my paranoia that you're always criticizing how I hold myself and you did not like socializing with people, social groups, my friends in, my friends in this particular case. I'm sorry I didn't contribute to any conversation with your friends. I only remember Kevin and Brian's names. I was already so anxious from preparing to tell you my idea I didn't have the energy to participate or have sex in your kitchen and over at your house after. Later on, I wasn't sure if you wanted to go back to my place after or not. To be honest, I had just finished working out after a long day of tutoring and dealing with idiots at the gym. I wasn't in a, even in the mood for sex. But in the back of my mind, I felt guilty that you had driven all the way, only to tell me one thing and I had to send you back empty-handed. Sounds like a joke, but it's really not. That's honestly how I think. Uh, when I asked if you wanted to have sex right after touching and groping and stuff, you said no, and then I got, inevit got the inevitable vibe that I was always push trying to push sex. I don't believe it's quite clear yet that just because I want to keep things casual doesn't mean I don't see you as anything more than a sex doll. There are lots of negatives in that sentence that I just said back there, but 
it's all in order, so I'm not going to correct anything. I'd have gone home, home feeling strange, tired, and filled with even more questions. I have so much fun talking with you. I hate feeling like I need to pace myself or that there are rules somewhere that need to be followed. Proper dating etiquette. What the hell is that? I hate feeling like after you're done being quote unquote interested in me, you'll find someone else to muse with. If you aren't already doing that now and simply said yes to my idea to humor me. Okay, so the reason I, get, I agreed to this project is because I wanted to. I don't really owe you anything, which is a good thing because that means whatever I do for you is genuinely because I want to and not because of some misguided guilt. I'm curious and experimental, so you bringing me the premise for an observational study was not going to elicit a no for me. You told me that you that you aren't currently. I couldn't say I couldn't say goodbye yet because I still want to know more. I need more wise answered. My artist friends that I'm not close to are excited about my project. My friends I am close to ask me why, when I'm such a sensitive and emotional person, would I set myself up to be hurt like this? They don't really know. I, pre I appreciate their concern. I'm blessed to have them in my life, but I don't think they understand the kind or amount of pain I've been through already. Heartbreak is scary, but only about as scary as a roller coaster is. At least then you know you'll come back up. Honestly, I'm curious to see whose heart breaks first. You seem to think you're in control. That interaction was followed by the day I was at my church Christmas party. It's relevant. And you sent me the text asking if you uh, if we've had sex the night before. Uh, I quickly hit my phone and replied as soon as I could with a no. But then you didn't seem to believe me. You eventually believed me when you figured it was just your dog. It was a bit annoying that you seriously doubted me about that but you know i swallowed it and since it was still under the whole i don't take it personally mindset i came over the same night to talk to you and we had that talk in which i thought was being i was being very clear and direct which i later found out that you took as a power play okay uh we didn't have sex that night either but guess what text i still got the next day i got the same did we have sex text at first, I thought it was a joke since it had literally happened the night before. <laughs> My jaw pretty much dropped when I found out that you were being serious and it was definitely not a joke. Um, I once again said no, but this time it was much harder to convince you that it wasn't me. The whole conversation turned into you crying and blaming me for something I didn't quite understand. The, that legit gave me flashbacks from my ex. Not the whole crying about things I don't understand, but it seemed as though no matter how much I tried to push for clear communication, clear communication and organized thought, it only made her emotions more overwhelming to the point where all blame was shifted to me. And I wanted to keep trying though, so I bit my tongue and just kept my head down so I don't make you cry again. It's about you and not about my ex, by the way, in case the transition wasn't clear. <sighs> okay. So it started to seem like your interaction were just experiments for you to push a different button. So I tried opening up less because I was only getting hurt by things that I had told you about. It was starting to feel like I was just giving you all my weaknesses so you could target practice. I can't stress to you how impressed I am by you and everything that you do. You're so smart and you can understand so much about the things I do. But it seems like there's something blocking you from seeing the reasons why I do the things I do. I'm sorry the tone of this entire thing might seem negative towards you, but it's not meant to be like that, trust me. There are many good things, lots of amazing talks we had that showed me so much that I didn't understand. It's just much easier to remember the things you spend the most time thinking about, you know? I tend to dissect the bad things that happen to me more because, I mean, come on, nobody wants to lick a gift horse in the mouth, right? I don't really get that saying, but whatever, I, I get it enough to be appropriate for this, okay? December 10th, 2016 Dear Christian, I'm coming to realize that I am afraid of you, not of you as the individual. People and whatever status they claim doesn't ever really move me, but as the personified manifestation of everything I've been running from for the last three years. Hence the constant and overwhelming anxiety. In one body and character, you are my deepest fear and most likely regret. One of the most aggressive heartbreaks I have ever encountered was caused by a boy with your same birthday. Sagittarius is a curse. I never knew a human who could, could, even in the blatant act of getting caught, lie so much and very badly. 
The feeling I have when you speak is familiar. Nothing and no one but you can be number one. I'm becoming a pet again. One that needs to, to learn, to be trained, changed to a specific standard and preference, and goaded into accepting your flaws while I hide or alter and or better mine for your sake, everything for your sake. I'm waiting for you to call to tell me if you can come by tonight. It's one hour after you said you thought you'd be done. I feel like you bank on my memory being shoddy. It isn't as bad as you assume. I'm tripping out over the incredible coincidence of two books I bought shortly after we first met. Sophie Cal's book of true sto short stories. Quote, why would I read others' true stories when mine is, is so amazing? End quote. And Chris Cross's I Love Dick. The, the latter references the other a couple times, but it was a complete fluke that they had anything to do with each other when I bought them. I'm only just beginning I Love Dick. Did I get my idea from Sophie? I did read her book first, but regardless, this feels like an affirmation from the universe to continue. To be completely honest, I probably would have without it anyway. Then again, maybe I would have shut down at some point in the middle without it. I'm so emotional right now. I want to see your face when the time comes I have to tell you I'm on my period. December 11th, 2016. Dear Christian, I don't know why I'm so excited today. I had a series of strange and some unpleasant dreams, but I'm still happy. I think I've decided I want to be less cynical because who does it help to always be anticipating the worst all the time? There's no way to brace for impact in these or any, any situation really, but I guess some part of me really wishes for that. The last few boys I was interested in, I told that I loved them, full well knowing that they would run. I knew that they didn't care for me beyond our physical friendship, but I grew attached and got scared. Better to sabotage early than to disappoint to be disappointed later. My feelings towards you are very different and I don't want to sabotage them or scare you off. I still feel you'll take flight eventually. I'm just not sure what it means for me right now. I feel like I'm saving most of my effort and affection for when I find out where you stand, but I've noticed that that strategy doesn't always work either. I guess at this point, I just want to say fuck it to any strategy or predisposition so I can actually enjoy myself. That's new. So going off that last note about you assuming I'm a 2D individual with the sex on the brain, I remember one time we were just texting casually and you asked me what I'd rather be doing uh, than what I was doing at the moment. And I was honest and said, having sex. And you just went for my throat with the obviously. This changed me for a bit because it reminded me not to take things too seriously since you didn't know me that well and this was casual so I shouldn't expect you to be delicate with me and my emotions. After that last interaction I started expecting much less from you but it seemed like the more I backed up the more you pushed. December 19th, 2016 Dear Christian, you hadn't talked to me for a few days, for four days, and I was convinced we were no longer speaking. I then decided it didn't matter because you were probably using me anyway. I was shocked by your phone call, that now you wanted to know what I wanted and what my expectations were. Are. I couldn't believe how upset you were that I insisted you only wanted sex. Even after you asserted that you have no reason to hurt me and that you haven't given me a reason not to trust you, I noticed you don't really take my feelings into consideration as much as you emphasized. You calculate the way I react to what you do or say, but you don't have compassion for the way I feel. We talked about sociopaths and what it means to be controlling. You are controlling. As much as I abhor that, I'm comfortable with it and somehow comforted by it. It relieves me of responsibility, and then your feelings become less of mine too. But the issue is that I think they are at all, especially when you've given me no reason to think you have any investment in me at all. Based on the fact that our interactions consist of what happens in my room and text message, another terrorist attack by truck happened in Berlin today. Some of my friends were there, you had nothing to say about it. In the time we didn't speak, another boy offered me the chance to have romantic dinners together, surprises, infinite compassion. I said no. My friends think I'm addicted to drama. I think I just want things to be interesting. Real romance is domestic and predictable, comfortable. I don't know how to and have never lived in that. 
but I can't help still wanting it and wondering if I've made a mistake. I want someone who will look at me and see magic and really understand me. I'm becoming more jaded each day. Maybe that that just doesn't exist for me. Maybe my friends are right. My heart hurts a lot tonight. For Nice and Berlin, I don't think you care. December, December 20th, 2016. Dear Christian, I don't think this is going to work out. My trust is not a right you can demand. It is a privilege you have to earn. And while you earn that, my feelings need to be acknowledged. If you're going to have expectations that you want met, you'll have to meet mine mutually. I'm not the only one with them here, so I don't know why you'd make such a huge deal about me having them. Stop telling me what I'm doing wrong. I'm not meeting your in not meeting your standard. And look in the mirror. You really aren't as introspective as you think. Bye. Signed, Eliza B. P.S. Merry Christmas. December 21st, 2016. Dear Christian, another boy found me last night. He took me out, bought me drinks. I met his friends. I don't know if I'll ever tell you about each other. Both of you are trying to act all cool and collected. Quote, yeah, we're getting to know each other, end quote, but then crying about whose responsibility is what. Of course I assume men are assholes because they are 99.9% .9 of the time. And they're big crybabies. Like you calling me to come over to talk about what we are not in a relationship, goddammit. Get what you want from someone else, someone who will put you in the spotlight more because I'm not going to, believe me. 12.40 a.m. December 22nd, 2016. Dear Christian, I spent tonight with some amazing and powerful women. I got invited to be in one of their performances. It was one of the most self-affirming nights. I'm so glad I went. I was mad. I was so mad feeling like you were expecting so much from me. You came over tonight to talk and it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. I've been talking, I've been taking whatever we are way too seriously and feeling a pressure I made up for myself. I'm really glad you you came over and had this talk. It helped me realize a lot of things. Thank you for asking what I'm unhappy with. Thank you for trying to understand and for listening. I think that's all I'm really looking for. I just need someone to really listen and really understand. I don't know if we'll ever get there 100%, but right now I'm learning so, so, so much. It is really sincerely opening my eyes and my mind and my heart. A light bulb, a light bulb has turned on. I'm sorry you felt kind you left kind of upset, but I can't apologize for what I said. I was being honest. I don't want to hide myself anymore. Never again. You enjoy staying in most of the time, except to go to parties and play sports. You bring food over from what you had at work. You aren't demanding but stating what is necessary for anything to work. Trust. You didn't answer one of my many questions. Are you exhausted yet? December 23rd, 2016. Dear Christian, I'm sitting inside of a little breakfast place by my house alone. I love it. I think doing things by yourself is really a lost art. I know people in their 40s and 50s that still can't do it. Maybe I'm just too good at it now. It's so much easier. And if I'm ever lonely, I have Tiberius or my friends or a date here and there. I see other people in relationships and I really don't understand sometimes. I need things to be changing. Things always need to be happening. New things, new places, new experiences, new ideas. Having some kind of home base to come back to is important. But how do you keep something like that in a constant state of interesting? You see each other all the time, every day. Know each other, deal with their faults because they, they are who they are. Compromise. I don't want to get stuck in domest domesticity again which is hilarious since I invited you over to feed you soup you said no and then went to get drunk with some friends I went to Kirby's show and had a few beers and came home the other boy called me around the same time you texted I answered both of you you didn't respond he came over I kind of have a feeling that things with you and I are beginning to melt into whatever it was meant to be but it's becoming pretty clear it wasn't meant to be romantic. I don't feel the same anxiety as I did before, especially after this talk we just had, and I'm understanding this lack of romance. 
but to be honest, I'm still weirdly obsessed with you. Soup isn't an emotional investment, it's just soup. Eliza B. P.S. I'm sorry these letters are so bitchy. I didn't even realize how much I still needed to work out in myself. <sighs> December 24, 2016. Christian. When I get your text that tells me you're home, I'm going to your house. I'm giving you your shirt back that you left soaking in my sink. No, I didn't wash it. Quote. Do you think if someone put subtitles under you, if you would have any kind of punctuation at all? End quote. The conversation we had last night left me absolutely drained and in tears. Quote, I'm trying to make you stronger. End quote. It's so like me not to go with my initial gut instinct. You're dangerous. Quote, this is why you have so much trouble with your interviews. Do you notice how every sentence I start already has a period at the end of it? You start a sentence and add more words onto it hoping the other person will understand and quote you stop talking like something else caught your attention what the fuck what longest pause ever how does that make you feel how does what make me feel oh wow never mind there's too much to cover now i don't know what you're referring to are you serious we've been talking forever never mind you paused for a long time i don't know what part of the conversation you're telling talking about another pause I don't have thoughts or feelings. This is all pre-recorded. Okay, what? I said okay. So am I just going to get more silence and scrambled words from you or what? I'm done. December 24th, 2016. Dear Christian, none of this went anything like what I expected. I am embracing the melancholy I feel over saying goodbye. Not because I was in love with you, but because on some insane level that never that neither of us have been on this past month, I'll miss you. My heart burned when I watched your realization sink in. I let you know everything the last few weeks in one sitting. Quote, control is everything and I never had it to begin with. I'm so sorry, end quote. I have never witnessed the kind of understanding that came over you in that moment. I had no faith that someone could learn so much and truly understand. But what was the, the most astonishing but what was the most astonishing to me that brought me to uncontrollable tears on the ride home, you let me go. The men in my life have all either been militant authoritarians clutching onto me white knuckled because they believed they owned me or martyrs, throwing, th throwing tantrums over their time invested and wasted. Never in my life have I experienced such a mutual respect and compassion. It is one of the most selfless things someone has done for me. Thank you. There is some part of me that wishes this could go on, if not to continue to grow and learn together than to see, just to see what happens. But I feel that both of us understand that's not how the best learning takes place, and it isn't how we'll end up getting the most out of this experience. It just blows my mind how after all the pre all the pressure and context was gone, we were finally able to be comfortable together. And what a shame that is for both of us to have been so blinded to something that could have been so beautiful. But at least our goodbye was beautiful. In the past, I've confused the love I, I, I felt for some people, thinking that that love equals romance. But I really feel the love you feel in, res in respect is so much more powerful than romance. Fuck romance and fuck fear. I will never second guess myself again or hide myself if I can help it. Thank you for learning with me, Christian. I love you for that. And thank you again for letting me go. Love, Eliza B. I just wanted to make a few of my reasons clear. So, I hate hypocrisy, so I try my best not to incur it. That being said, I'm, I'm a pretty big hypocrite sometimes, and you made that clear to me in your big talk with me that day when you wanted to end things and such. I was created by hypocrisy. I literally hate everyone who exudes personalities, traits that I hated myself. I learned English from scratch, which means at one point I could not speak a word of it. Imagine spending years and years being scrutinized for not knowing the rules to a game. And then when you finally learn the rules, everyone decides to ignore them and make fun of you for even acknowledging them. 
I try every day to master the language because I'm trying to avoid a frequent pitfall of mine, which is miscommunication. There is so much I can say to explain how seriously I take this, but this letter is getting a bit long-winded, so I'll just summarize it. Being able to communicate efficiently is so important to me that when people disregard that and instead choose to shoot out whatever their emotions decide to load up, it frustrates me. Because I'm over here trying my hardest to walk through the cave with a candle, and you're just blowtorching the walls thinking that that, that will somehow get us to the end. All that'll do is trap us in a burning cave. Hopefully that metaphor helps. Um, I had frequent miscommunications with my ex because she would also hide how she felt about little things that annoyed her and then she would ex it just explode on me one day with a bunch of things I could no longer fix. She would doubt my intentions at every turn. I've gotten, I've, I've gotten much better at picking my battles about everything. But just because I choose not to plead my case doesn't mean I think I'm guilty. It means I'm very disappointed in you. In, you, in the fact that you thought I was guilty in the first place. And now I've lost a small percent of the trust in your judgment because of that. Another downside of constantly having my attention is second guess is that I constantly feel like I'm walking on eggshells so someone doesn't jump to conclusions and get hurt by something that wasn't intended to hurt anyone. Watching what I say can be difficult at times, but I care about you enough to be willing to do it because I know you've been through a lot and the last thing I want is to make you relive something that you're trying to put behind you. I behave the way I do because I think I would be lucky to receive the same treatment in return. Even though I know you're talented and all, I still see potential in you to be better, which is why I try to push you forward. But I've been getting the impression that that's not welcome. My motivation doesn't have the desired effect on you and that happens. Not everybody processes information the same way, but you gotta at least understand that I was trying to help. I have a very, I have very little to offer people sometimes, so when I get a chance to actually help somebody, I throw everything I have at them to try to complete their puzzle with my straight pieces. I get that my straight pieces will not always be welcome, but that doesn't stop it from hurting when you don't realize I'm just trying to help and you get mad. Uh, so in conclusion, when it comes down to it, I'm learning a lot from you, to be honest, and that's my main reason for staying. Uh, I don't know why you do. So Everything I left out we've already discussed. Sincerely, Christian.